Every one of the men, women, and children who pioneered by moving over the mountains, struggling with the hardship of nature, Native Americans, and the French and British, played a role in the founding of Tennessee and in its becoming the 16th state by 1795. For territory to be considered for statehood, its population had to reach a magical number. Politicians became salesmen, good, powerful salesmen. When it came time to sign the new Tennessee Constitution in 1796, of the 55 delegates meeting at the convention in Knoxville, five were from Sevier County. John Sevier was not one of the signers of the Tennessee Constitution, but that doesn't diminish his role in North Carolina, Franklin, Southwest Territory politics. Sevier was a pusher, a persuader. That's why, once President George Washington signed the authorization for statehood, the popular John Sevier was its first governor. Among those cheering him on was Joshua Gist, probably born around 1740 in Baltimore County, Maryland. His uncle, Christopher, had made his place in history by being a guide and a scout for General Washington. Before coming to the French Broad River region of what became Sevier County, Jez had a prominent career as a captain in the North Carolina militia. When the 13 colonies declared their independence from Britain in July of 1776, Gist was stationed at Camp Wilmington in North Carolina. Gist was a very active as a land trader, buying and selling land all over the region. For a short time, he, his land was in Jefferson County, where he was a justice of the peace. When Sevier County was formed in 1784, Gist was one of the justices from Sevier County Court and a strong advocate for the state of Franklin. When the new state was organized in 1785, he was named assistant judge to the Franklin Supreme Court. He was also witness at the signing of the Treaty of Dumplin in May of 1785. That treaty provided settlers with more Cherokee land. Coincidentally, his plantation was near the mouth of Dumplin Creek. Here's some assimilation trivia for you. The Cherokee that developed the alphabet and the written language for the Cherokee Nation also had a English name, George Gist. It is known that Sequoia's father was Nathaniel Gist, same as Joshua's father's name and that of a first cousin. So Sequoia was either a half-brother or a cousin to Jonathan Gist. And I have another little known fact. One of Joshua and Elizabeth Gist's sons, Mordecai, married Frances Clack, who's the daughter of Patriot Spencer Clack. Obviously, many more men and women fought hard to achieve statehood for the area. Colonel Samuel Ware, Isaac Thomas, Samuel Newell, Spencer Clack, and Joshua Gist are just a few of Sevier's compatriots. We should all be proud that in the early days of our county, we were blessed with such strong and independent founders. They were absolutely critical to making statehood for Tennessee happen. As John Waters Jr. wrote in his introduction to Sevier County's Bicentennial Almanac, there was no shortage of capable leaders among the people who first settled Sevier County. Of course, the same can be said of the Cherokee during the same time period. It takes at least two sides to sign a treaty, and in this part of the Southwestern Territories, there was more commonality with the Cherokee while there were, there were some fierce and bloody fights before Tennessee was granted statehood. The Sevier County Bicentennial History Committee's publication proved quite valuable in the writing of this tribute to our early shakers and movers. If you'd like to know more about your relationships to any of these VIPs or any of the other folks who settled here, we're at your service. We have a lot of material that can help you here on the third floor of the King Family Library in the Maples History Center.